Hello, sir. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I've been enjoying Great. the show. Wonderful. Well, we had a, I gave a little oh, background of yourself, some of your, of your bio, but if you would, if you wouldn't mind just sharing just a little bit about yourself and then a little bit about your guest, and then we'll turn it over to you and have you guys have a great chat. All right. Well, um, thank you uh, for this, this great opportunity. I, my name is Greg Lehman, and I'm part of the Blueprints Lab uh, Collaborative that uh, is really focused on moving intellectual property out of uh, places where it doesn't get the light of day, like university shelves, uh, out into the field. And um, that's part of kind of a lifelong journey for me. I've uh, been in various roles, moving tech into place. And so I'm, I'm delighted to have this chat with uh, retired general, uh, Lieutenant General J.D. Johnson, and um, look forward to welcoming him on. Um, he's uniquely qualified, perhaps, to, to speak to us about this whole um, moment that we're in and, and the, the job that we all came together to, to think about, which is, is how do we get the tech into the field uh, faster and more effectively? Because he's not only served and commanded uh, armed forces um, and, and was a, a national leader in, in that space using the products of this industry, but now at Raytheon, he's a key member of, of the team that's trying to produce the next, next wave. And we're going to have a chance to get his perspective on how this system needs to work in the changing environment that we all collectively face today. Wonderful. Well, take it away. Hope, uh, J.D., you have a wonderful chat. We're looking forward to your comments. And uh, yeah, is, is J.D. with me? I, J.D., I'm, are you there, sir? I am. I think. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, but you're in space, so it's a long way. <laughs> it is a long way. <laughs> hey, Greg. Is, I look forward to the discussion today. Before we get started, I just want to thank Scott and David and all the volunteers working with America's Future Series for the opportunity to discuss. I really enjoyed the panel we just heard from, and looking forward to the rest of the program. Well, um, JD, I. Uh, I didn't formally mention, you know, your your current title. I, I I've been told you're not um, a big stickler on um, reading detailed bios and things like that. But as yeah, the I appreciate that VP of Government uh, Integrated Solutions, you know, in business development um, there at Raytheon, um, you know, it's uh, I think it's important for our, our audience to understand the perspective that that you bring, as well as uh, having you know been in the field and and so. Um, Thank you for, for agreeing to, to come and, and share your thoughts. What, what I thought we would do is, is really just talk a little bit first about how the world's changing. Um, you have an insight into that that many of us do not have. And then kind of what we're doing about it. You know, it, uh, the, the armed forces is changing how they're trying to conduct business, uh, both in the field and in procurement. And then everybody else in this room is is trying to figure out how to how do we play play better ball, right? So um, if, if you wouldn't if you wouldn't mind, um, you know, maybe start with uh, some some of your thoughts about how what's all changed. I mean, the global threats uh, are different. The people are behaving differently. You know, what do you see? Yeah, uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, well, things are changing. You know, in the last 20 years, our military has been laser focused on counterinsurgency. And you know, it all started with 9-11 and really even before that, uh, new organizations sprang up uh, that were connected with military acquisition. <coughs> Pardon me. And, um, and the tactics, the training, et cetera, all reflected the demands of counterinsurgency. What was happening, though, in the meantime, is some of our more traditional uh, competitors or adversaries were spending their money on advanced technology. So the Chinese and the Russians in particular were investing in hypersonics, uh, advanced uh, aviation technologies. Um, you know, we've seen the Chinese, everyone on this, on this uh, program has kept up with, you know, even building islands to press and push their ability to influence uh, further out into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, they've, they've taken on a very aggressive attitude uh, toward their neighbors, and it, it has challenged some of what have been uh, the norms 
by which you know we have all operated uh, in those theaters. The Russians, of course, uh, we, we saw go into the Ukraine, the Crimea, and then the Ukraine. Um, uh, you know, with um, irregular activities, though backed up by some very sophisticated technologies. We see what the Russians are doing today in Syria with some absolutely uh, incredible air defense capabilities and other capabilities and the willingness to push out of Russia and, and be more um, uh, willing to uh, participate with their military forces around the world. So all of this um, has caused our uh, government and our military to relook the way we're focused. So 2018, then Secretary Mattis uh, led a team to write a new defense strategy. And that new defense strategy is focused on you know, competition uh, more broadly and specifically focused on the, the challenges that China and Russia pose to us. Well, uh, that defense strategy, uh, I just had a, 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 took the time to brief, look, briefly look at it, and, and you probably know it uh, very, very well, but you know, one of the things that um, it's, you know, it, the challenges that are in that are, are going to have to be fulfilled by a lot of players. I, I think one of the things about this event in particular that, that drives it is the recognition that it, there's there's not a single source kind of way to meet these problems and their, their complexity. Um, anything that you wanna say about how uh, Raytheon is um, adapting itself to, to that, that new, uh, new world and, and maybe in particular the, the key uh, necessity for speed? Sure. Um, so Raytheon, as you can imagine, as everyone else involved in this program pays very close attention to our customers for all the obvious reasons. You know, I, I have benefited a lot from industry's ability to provide the military with the capabilities they needed, depending on the environment that we were in, the kinds of threats we faced. Certainly Raytheon is focused on how to help the military, the Department of Defense solve its most challenging, uh, most demanding problems. Uh, you know, there are those that have taken a look at the things we just talked about, uh, what the Russians were doing in, uh, in Europe and, and what the Chinese uh, are doing in the Pacific and have articulated in terms of us uh, falling behind somewhat uh, technologically uh, and, in, and in the way we're organized. Uh, you know, former national security advisor, then General uh, McMaster, you know, talked about us being outrun outranged and outgunned, you know, that, that we are finding ourselves in a position where uh, in some cases we're not being the kind of deterrent we ought to be. So Raytheon uh, invests pretty heavily in an ability uh, to conduct operations analysis at a classified level uh, and bring modeling and simulation to bear to interact with the government customer on their own terms to be able to talk about contingency operations of where their capability gaps are. There was a really good discussion, I thought in the panel just preceding us about the difference between a focus on technology and a focus on capability. Not obviously very closely related, but the military is trying to close capability gaps. And that's where, that's where Raytheon's focus is. So our, as I said, our analysis and interaction with the government uh, to include at the classified level, which includes a lot of investment in facilities, as you can imagine, and the skills, skills necessary to do that. And then the leading edge technologies that um, have the capability of deterring um, those who might challenge us and repurposes it, repurposing existing technology. There's, there's a lot that, that the government has invested in, that Raytheon has invested in in the past that may have been designed for one specific purpose, but when looked at differently, can do other things, can do maybe more than what they were originally designed for. You know, the focus of, of this series, of course, is on, on interaction with small business. Many of the best ideas, some of the technologies that really make a difference, some of the ideas about repurposing come from our relationships with, with small business. Well, have, um, thank you, at, you know, for mentioning that. I, I, 
I've, I've been on more of the small business side and, and sometimes in, in corporate world and, and those environments is, is just that shift alone can be very different, you know, be a huge shift. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, with the, the new situation where we're no longer can assume we have technological advantage around, you know, in every fight and we, we always have had in the past, but also the, the, so with this need for speed and need to be inclusive of an, a sourcing, you know, uh, tech from a lot of places. Does it change the way you have to go about things? Um, you know, what, how, you know, if somebody knew the Raytheon of 15 or 20 years ago, how, what would they find that's different or, and, or were you hoping to take it so that this can work better and work better? <laughs> It's a gr- great question, Greg. You know, it's interesting. Raytheon, like I'm sure um, others that are successful in industry, um, study our customers very closely. We understand how they program money. We understand how they make decisions, um, how they develop technology, where the laboratories are, where the right decision makers are. But it's clear when you're in uh, catch-up mode, you got to do things more quickly. The government has worked hard, as have industry associations with Congress, to come up with different uh, capabilities, different tools, if you will, to move faster. Um, there are contract-like uh, tools, like other transactional authorities, uh, that allow the government to move more quickly when prototyping. Um, there are um, middle-tier middle acquisition authorities, uh, so-called 804 authorities that came out in the 2016 NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, which you know, gave the government and therefore industry two uh, pathways, one for rapid prototyping and one for rapid fielding. There's a, a big push in the military now to take advantage of the money that is in industry to invest in new technologies. It used to be the government. You know, in history, the government largely paid for that kind of development. Um, now, uh, the government's trying to take advantage of that money that is in industry for that. And so you see an attitude of, of fly before you buy and a desire to get after those changes as, as quickly as possible. As a result of that, that changes the way certainly Raytheon has to think about the way we interact with government. You have to understand the rules associated with OTAs. You have to understand the rules associated with middle tier acquisition authorities and then how to best interact with the government to satisfy their requirements, but also, you know, clearly look out for your business responsibilities. Um, one thing that's come up in a lot of industry, uh, major players in, in various industries is the use of, of um, you know, corporate incubators and, you know, corporate venturing, that, that kind of activity. Uh, we, we hadn't really, um, your, your answer kind of made me wonder, is that because a prime contractor like Raytheon, you know, you, you are such a pivotal role and, and most technology is gonna to have to come through your kinds of hands on its way, you know, to, to the field uh, many, many times. So um, are, are, you know, are, there, are there opportunities for, for you as a, you know, this type of a player in this industry to create some, some new pathways to, to gather the crowd and you know, assemble the, the team that's coming from so many places? Uh, the like the answer is, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, the answer is absolutely. Uh, in fact, I don't, I don't think we could be successful if, if we weren't good at teaming, and if uh, the small businesses that, that we enjoy a relationship with, and that grows all the time, uh, weren't good at adapting quickly and being assimilated onto the team so we can bring the best uh, of each of us. You know, we, we um, you know, basically from capture to program execution, small businesses are involved with us you know, for, for decades, really. The government has emphasized small business. Uh, we, we realize just inherently the value of having businesses that bring special skills, um, special technologies, et cetera. Fully f- over 57% of Raytheon supply base is from small and diverse suppliers. So we, we couldn't exist without those relationships. And there are things that, that Raytheon can do as, as other industry leaders do uh, to help 
the smaller businesses as they come along. I just talked about some of the uh, government uh, regulations and authorities and the changes. Uh, we work with a lot of businesses that don't can't necessarily invest in in having people that study uh, those kinds of regulations or or understand them. We we can help uh, sort that out. We can give a leg up uh, when we're trying to pull in what that business really brings, the uniqueness that they bring. So we can negotiate what sometimes can seem to be a pretty daunting maze of regulations and and organizations uh, to to be able to get after success, success being providing what our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines need uh, on the battlefield, if called, uh, but also business success. We're, we're in business uh, to take care of uh, our abilities to continue to invest in the future and take care of our stockholders, of course. For sure. Well, let's, let's take the little bit of remaining time we have and kind of talk to that audience that, you know, you've got a lot of, of of uh, tech companies um, tuned in and who've, who've come together for, for this. Um, I'm wondering uh, about a couple of things. You know, the Undersecretary of Defense has uh, put out some areas of focus uh, like artificial intelligence. We've got a lot of those kind of folks here today. Um, you've got, that's men, they've mentioned biotech, cyber, a um, number of areas. Um, what, I, what I would like you to comment on is just, okay, is, where are some areas that uh, Raytheon is focused that if somebody believes they have part of the answer, you know, that you, they would say, hey, I should, I should call, uh, call the general up and talk to him about it. You just reel off a big list. And, and because you're reading off uh, Secretary Esper and um, the research and engineering, ASD research and engineering's technology priorities, and, and naturally we're focused there. So very focused in across the board. Well, across we are in a large yeah. part across the board. Um, the the business that I'm in within Raytheon Technologies, Raytheon Intelligence and Space, <clears throat> focused on space and the various technologies associated with that, communications, etc focused on <clears throat> intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, airborne ISR, et cetera, uh, focused on communications, cyber, uh, directed energy, very heavily um, uh, invested in uh, directed energy. Uh, we work the command and control. Uh, I think most of our audience is familiar with uh, the military's most recent uh, JADC2 joint, all domain uh, command and control. <laughs> and all the aspects that it entails, and AI is at the heart of all of that. So if, if you're involved in AI, certainly we are, and we want, we want to talk to you. Many of the small businesses that we work with are, in fact, invested in AI and different aspects of artificial intelligence and machine learning. But, but that's just, a, uh, if you will, a small part of, of where we're focused, and they track very closely, Greg, uh, to what you were just talking about, which are the technology priorities. You know, as we come into the <clears throat> next few years, uh, a lot of debate going on right now, especially in election year, about where budgets are going to go. So we're all looking at where uh, the clear signals are. Um, where is it that the Department of Defense is going to continue to invest, no, ma no matter what happens uh, with their budgets? And what are the right teams, to the point that you're asking about, uh, can can put a capability in the department's hands uh, quickly uh, so that up front it can do the job of uh, deterring uh, potential aggressors and then if if need be uh, put our um, our forces in a position of advantage if they, if they have to go to that um, well, this uh, last question, I wanted you to give you time to you know, unpack a little bit because you may have several things you want to say, but just in terms of advice to these smaller companies, the, the tech companies, and um, if, if you don't, if you don't mind, I mean, you, you've done so much of this work at Raytheon with, you said, 57, I think, percent of your, mm -hmm. your supply chain. So you know how to work with entities of very different size than yourself, but I, I know... Um, it, broadly speaking, there you know people, little companies are often concerned a bit. It feels like an ant dancing with an elephant sometimes, and 
you know, he may step on me and not realize it. But uh, so how how do you uh, how do you advise smaller companies in general and, and specifically in how to to engage effectively, even though they're, you know, they're very different in size and, and uh, power in the relationship? Yeah, I, I would I think that the most successful uh, small companies are clear about what they do best. And they can clearly articulate that and, and articulate the relevance. Um, and, and as we talked about just a minute ago, not everyone uh, can employ you know, former uh, military or study the changes in doctrine and strategy. And so the dialogue up front about the capability that you bring uh, and that dialogue extending to, okay, so where might it apply? It could well be that the ideas you have coming in don't directly align with, with the way at least Raytheon sees uh, the government need. And so how adaptive are you? Uh, are you able to entertain application of your technology differently than what you had originally thought? And I think the most successful businesses are very good at that. They're, they're looking for how to take the, again, those unique uh, skills and capabilities they bring and fit it into the solutions that are going forward. Um, I think we all know what the, the major advantages of, of, of big industry is, the, the ability to scale and scope, um, the ability to bring together the research capabilities and the really eye-watering engineering capabilities. But small business, um, as, we, as we've already discussed, brings unique capabilities, technologies, solutions, know-how that, that uh, Raytheon and others are not invested in. And therefore, sticking to what you do best, sticking to what you know, and clearly articulating that to Raytheon so that we can get you to the right place in Raytheon where you do fit in and where you can make a contribution and where your value is recognized, I think is, is the, the right up front the, the key step do you see anything they need to understand about your culture uh that, that would just really help if you know as they try to engage maybe for the first well, time raytheon is is a big is a big organization uh not unlike uh the the department of defense our, our customer and, and not like our uh competitors out there and yeah. so as a result we, you know we've got our, a certain culture and the way we do business. I think part of that dialogue I was talking about is associating yourself with somebody inside the business that can help you navigate those waters. So you're navigating Raytheon to get to the right place, talk to the right people. You're navigating our customer, our mutual customer, the Department of Defense, the services, et cetera, um, and, and to gain a, a larger perspective in some cases about how what you bring to the table might be applied. Uh, what, you know, we spend, we've talked briefly about it, but we spend a lot of effort looking at the technologies that our potential adversaries have. And so mm -hmm. how might what you're doing uh, offset, uh, mitigate um, the capabilities that a potential adversary have? Give again, our, our customers, our national capabilities mm -hmm. an, an advantage. So I would say, again, if you can be clear up front about what it is you do, that makes it that much easier for me or anyone else at Raytheon to get you linked with the right part of our business that could best benefit by having a relationship with you and would best understand your technologies <clears throat> or your skills. And it's not all technology. Raytheon, uh, for the longest time in the, uh, the war on terrorism, ran uh, the, the, the effort to train our forces to get ready to go into Afghanistan and Iraq and elsewhere. A huge part of that effort, the actual on the ground work was small businesses that had particular training skills and particular uh, experiences. Uh, and it was through an understanding of who they were and where they were that when an opportunity um, came about that we could reach out directly to them, build a team very fast, satisfy a, 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 a request or a need for the customer and then, and then turn to the next problem to solve. 
Well, General, um, we've, we've used our time. I, I thank you so very much for, for giving us your time today and, and of course for your service to this country. Um, and uh, I hope you know, many of these um, people in the audience find each other. That's, that's the whole purpose of this event. I hope you, you were able to make really valuable connections um, as, as part of uh, the benefit for showing up. And um, Greg, thanks so much. And, and thank you again for what you and the team are doing to put events like this together so we can more easily link up. And I look forward to talking to the people that are out there as, as we find the opportunities moving forward. So thanks again. You bet. We'll sign off.